Back now to Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois. And, of course, we can check some interesting matchups tonight, but in the starting lineups, Bullock and Pat, uh, Palombizio, Ross at center. Last time we saw Purdue play, Reed was not getting the start. This is his third start in a row. We saw Hall will be the other guard. And the Illini, pretty much the same as we've seen them all season long. Winners and Welch, Leonard at center in the place of Montgomery and Harper and Douglas at the guards. A very young lineup, Ray, one that learned a tough schedule in December. That included Kentucky and Vanderbilt and some others. It's been a very close series. 62 to 60 in favor of Purdue. And these two teams won more Big Ten games than any other in the Big Ten Conference. Matter of fact, they're so very close. Illinois won 575, Purdue 574. Illinois and white, Purdue in the visiting black. Ross against that from winners. Here we go, typically controlled to Illinois. Bruce Douglas, the very fine freshman guard for Illinois, comes in. See how long these two have been playing. Man for man defense now for Purdue. And they've got Ricky Hall on Derek Harper. Harper's in his last 18 shot. Winners inside. Rebound is down by Cross. And Cross working Bullock. on winners. That was Bullock with the rebound. Here's Purdue now. They got a chance to draw first blood. Steve Reed, a former super sub, now has been cast in the starter's role. And he's done well. Does a lot more than just score, although he's the second leading scorer for the Boilermakers. Man for man, Harper's on Reed. And Douglas on Hall. Hall penetrates. There's a Palombizio blocked down by a Welsh. Boy, Illinois with a tough man for man defense, and Welsh did a great recovery. Boy, he did. He really did. Well, boy, he got by a cross. Away from the ball, first foul of the game, and it's on Russell Cross, the great star of Purdue. Oh, this guy can carry a team, and that's what he does for Purdue, averaging 18.6, eight rebounds, and 51 blocks, all leading statistic categories for the Boilermakers. That foul, strictly retaliation. He was trying to get Leonard. Leonard had got out of there, and instead, he was picking on Welch. A lot of people waiting for Derry Harper's next shot. He's in his last 18 in a row. There's Douglas left wide open. Hip and steel left Douglas open. Illinois draws first blood. A line I lead 2-0. Yeah, Reed just went right by him. We're doing a man for man offense here against the sticking man. They put two guys around Cross on the inside. Alan Bezos shot a moment ago, blocked by Welch, and that time he thought better of it. Here goes uh, Ricky Hall, cut over the baseline. They're having a tough time finding a shot. Oh, Illinois really playing great man for man defense. They are. Palombizzi out of the corner, hits for Purdue. That'll break the scoring ice. Gene Cady settled back a little bit now as we're tied at two. Well, a sort of a front door and back door on cross down there with Leonard playing in front of him, the weak side forward to come out and play behind him. Purdue, same uh, thing of the other end. Inside, Winters has a holding foul on Cross. Two fouls on Russell Cross who's been assigned to the brilliant rookie of Illinois, Ephraim Winters. And that's a great development here in the opening minutes, especially for Illinois. Take another look at it, and there it was right on the arm, and there's no way that Cross can keep going like this. He'll be out of there in a hurry. We may see a change right now. Back uh, comes Joe Gamper. Joe Gamper with the bad legs has come in to replace Cross. Might not be that bad now, but Gamford, who's gone through a surgery, here's the jump shot by Harper. Harper makes it 19 in a row. Has not missed the last three games. Illinois leads again, four to two. So Cross has had to go to the bench with two fouls in the first two and a half minutes. Big development of the game. Let's see how things happen here. Sometimes teammates will pick it up. It is a big start. There goes Bullock from the corner, going to be short. Rebound Illinois, Harper's got it. Four to two, Illinois leads. And Harper's hit one for one so far. The great thing about Harper, of course, he's leading uh, the Big Ten right now in field goal percentage. And you take a look at where he takes some of his shots. That's a remarkable feat right now. Well, they put Douglas inside on the little guy. Rebound is taken off by Gamper. So Gamper gets his first rebound. Four to two, Illinois. They're trying to take little 5'10 Steve Reed on the inside with a taller uh, Douglas who played center. There's a push off by Gamper underneath. 
Purdue's been fouling a lot here. They're playing a very aggressive defense. It cost them dearly in the first couple of minutes when Russell Cross, their All-American candidate, picked up two fouls. Gene Katie up that time, and he thought possibly Leonard was playing a little too rough underneath. Well, you think Lou Henson doesn't realize what's going on here. Now, Katie exhorting his team. He may go to a zone. Having trouble here with early fouls. Two on Cross is the big item. And Purdue is in a zone. They switched off the man for man. Here's Welch from the corner, strong. Rebound by Bullock. When they played at Purdue, of course, Purdue played almost half the game in a zone the first time, beating Illinois. Illinois leads 4-2. Reed off the dribble. Won't go. Rebound by Leonard for Illinois. Harper comes down the medium break, driving in on Hall, cuts him off. That's going to be an interesting side show, Hall and Derek Harper. Right now, though, they're in a zone, so they may not be paired off. And from Winners open. And from Winners gives Illinois its biggest lead at 6-2. Winners, of course, and likes that shot. 12-footer, 12 to 14 feet. Illinois stays with its man-for-man -man matchup. There's Ricky Hall from the perimeter over Douglas, over the bank board, over to Illinois. If there's a difference in these two teams, Purdue's probably more consistent team on a level keel, while Illinois plays more up and down. But that guy's been on a real high. Derek Harper, 19 straight. A couple of other strings here tonight, too, Ray, because Bruce Douglas needs three field assists to tie Derek Harper's all-time record, and already he has two. So one, and there it is! Inside the winners, and that ties the record. Take it again, and here is Douglas tying that assist record, feeding in, and it's an easy play. Strictly a mismatch at the baseline. Alley-oop, uh, Douglas has tied Derek Harper's record. Ricky Hall, Illinois now. And there's a foul away from the ball. That's gonna be on Illinois. I think they're pointing toward George Montgomery, who Just came in it. on that timeout. That'll be Montgomery's first foul, and the Illini's first foul. There's Montgomery, a 6'8 sophomore from Chicago. Of course, Russell Cross from Chicago, come back to his home state, had to sit down early here because of the early fouls. Now Jim Rowinski has moved in at center, replacing Joe Gamper. Rowinski's in with Leonard on the bench and come back with Rowinski's a little stronger, but not quite as tall. Illinois zoning, the inbounds play, Ricky Hall trapped in the corner. 8-2, Illinois leads, they've scored six straight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Steve Reed from way out the perimeter. Rebound tipped outside to Douglas. Illinois does not want to run. Right. Why now we'll come down and play half court. Got a couple of men breaking down there, but you're very wise in sort of setting it up, as you mentioned, a half court offense. There's a lob inside of Montgomery, and there's a push off by Rowinski. Rowinski's an interesting story. There he is, a muscular guy, number 41. He uh, was a cut from his high school class when he's a junior at 5'10", came to Purdue as a walk-in at 6'4", and now he's 6'8", weighs 245 pounds. 8-2, Illinois in the lead. Purdue has gone to a zone defense after fouling very early in the man from end. There's an outside by Welch. Rebound will come to Ricky Hall for Purdue. That time, Illinois can now work it in for the easy shot. Illini getting back quickly on the fence, setting up in a hurry. Purdue was plagued early in the season by falling behind the outset, but they thought they'd overcome that problem, and here they are again tonight. And he's inside Bullock, and he walks. Bullock fumbled the ball and went up. Katie is really hot. He thought the ball was blocked, but it's going to be a turnover to Illinois. There's Katie. Oh, he's fuming. He said that his man was hit on the arm. And the shot was blocked and he was fouled, but the official said, nope, it was just a violation. Illinois gets it, leading eight to two. And some of our fans remember when Katie's team was playing against Luda Olson's Iowa team and how both those guys were off the bench and really got their teams fired up and Katie trying to do that again. There's another one, that'll break the record. Douglas to Montgomery. Just moving around the baseline, Douglas feeds Montgomery all by himself. Rowinski had come out and didn't even cover his man. And a brand new assist record for the University of Illinois, set by freshman Bruce Douglas. As a whistle on the play, as Purdue had uh, Bullock driving and Montgomery fouled. Oh, they're going to say it was winners, Ephraim winners fouls. 
First foul on Winters. You know, actually, that last basket that uh, Illinois made with Montgomery underneath it, that zone, uh, there's a danger a couple of your big men sort of wandering out away from that basket. Well, you got to throw a perfect pass, and Douglas says it so well. Here's a set play for Palambizio. Palambizio, who's sort of a bad man here in Illinois because he was the guy that beat the Illini in the first meeting. 10 to 4. Breaks a little long drought. Illinois has scored eight straight points. Six point lead now to the Illini with 13 minutes to go in the first half. Well, they tried to swing at the weak side there, and a good recovery by Rowinski. Boy, Douglas plays so much like a veteran out here, just a yeah. freshman. Was a center in high school of a great uh, team at Quincy. Inside, he goes to Montgomery. Can't hold it, but it's put up by Winters, and he draws the foul by Palabizio. Nice recovery by up from Winters. They grab the loose ball. Yeah, both he and Palambizio going for it here. Off the fingertips of Montgomery. Palambizio lost it right there and then commits the foul, trying to go back up and block that shot. Winners will be uh, given two shots. This guy's going to be a very dominating player before he isn't already. Just a freshman. And he thought a top freshman in the Big Ten. When he came in from last year's recruiting class, he may well be that. There's going to be a hot race, though, for Rookie of the Year. Yep. Winners will get a lot of uh, competition with his own teammate, Bruce Douglas. And, of course, there's Scott Skiles of Michigan State and Mark Wilson of Minnesota and some others around the way. It's been a good year for young players in the Big Ten. Michigan's got a raft of them. Well, you mentioned Winners, of course, 20th in scoring right now in the conference, 9th in rebounding. 12 for Illinois by eight again. That represents the biggest lead. The line eyes still in the man for man defense. And uh, Russell Cross still on the bench for Purdue. The interesting see if Katie keeps him out the whole first half with two fouls. Broken up and a reach in foul by Douglas. Oh, Douglas almost had his 69th steal of the year. It's his first foul. Paul was having a little trouble with the dribble here. Behind the back, actually off his body. And that's where Douglas tried to make the theft and instead committed the foul. Gene Cady, who was a great athlete himself, although he didn't play college basketball, he was a great, great football out of Kansas. Played one year in the NFL. That's a foul again on Montgomery. And trying to deny the ball to the postman of Purdue, Montgomery was guilty fouling. And they've done a pretty good job of doing that. Purdue really didn't match up well with uh, Illinois because of Steve Reed, who's 5'10". He had to take either Derek Harper or Bruce Douglas. Either way, it was going to be 6'3 or 6'4, and they're going to take him right inside. There's a wild pass, and Hall tried to get it, intercepted by Derek Harper. Harper comes back, it goes Harper, drives on the inside, he's fouled. That will not count as a shot attempt. The streak is still alive. Harper did not hit the shot, but he was fouled. On the steal there, Reed was left to guard Harper. It has been Hall. Hall finally got back, and it was Hall that committed the foul. Derek Harper, all-time leader in assists and seals in Illinois, over 400 assists, over 170 uh, steals. Free throws don't count. <laughs> We're in a field goal streak here with Derek Harper. Well, you know, last year he played the point guard. He'd bring the ball down, and now having some help at the point guard and letting him use be the wingman, he's been able to do a better job in his shooting department. Missed them both, and a foul on the rebound by Ephraim Winters. So that didn't lead to very good news for Illinois as Harper missed both ends. Winters picked up his second foul and the 15 foul. Fouls now have turned around a little bit. Purdue uh, committed them early. Now Illinois. Back in comes Leonard replacing Montgomery. And Russell Cross has returned, as you see. Yeah. So Cross is back in. He went out for about five minutes, uh, maybe five and a half minutes after getting two quick fouls. So Cross is back in there. You saw those free throws missed that time. Illinois is ninth in the conference in free throws as a team, and Purdue is 10th, dead last. Well, Gene Candy knows he cannot get too far behind Illinois here in Champaign. Palambizio with a shot, and a foul against Illinois underneath. That'll be on Leonard, I think. Yeah, Leonard got caught that time. Earlier in the game, he was working on cross pretty good. Look at that arm motion right there. It took him right out of the play. And Okay, the Illini five for nine at 55%, and also the Illini two for four from the free throw line for 50%. Rebounds are all even. 
And so far, Purdue is sitting right now two for seven at 286. They have not been to the line. All right, Purdue has Russell Cross back in the lineup. There he is, down low, double team. He's surrounded. And out of bounds stepped Ricky Hall. Well, a mental lapse by Hall. Didn't know where he was, standing on the boundary. Turns it over to Illinois. Purdue now with five turnovers, and the Illini, no turnover. Well, Illinois shooting 55% too, but a lot of them have been easy shots. Those two alley hoops really help for that. Now well, they've got Douglas down again as Purdue goes back to man for man. Then Douglas puts it. There he is in the hole against Steve Reed. Once Purdue goes to man for man, they send Douglas down low. Douglas got about a five inch height advantage. Picked off, that pass was blocked by Cross. Lead to Cross, Douglas tried to get it, Cross lays it up and he's fouled by Douglas. Big play by Russell Cross. Foul by Douglas, second foul on Douglas. I didn't believe the foul here. Douglas tries to intercept, can't do it. Makes it an easy play for Cross. Now reaches across, I guess he did get a piece of the arm, at least that's what the official thought. It could be a three-point play for Russell Cross. 12 to six. Purdue trying to cut back into that eight-point lead. He's got it down to six. Cross will try to make it five. 12-7 now, a little over 11 minutes to go. Purdue back court pressure. Bruce Douglas being hounded out here by Steve Reed. Derek Harper is his 19th straight free throw field goal attempt. Inside Leonard, look, hooked it up there. Cross had to stay off him, and Leonard back Cross right into the basket for the short hook. Exactly right, Jim. You call it perfectly. Cross, no way, was going to be able to contend with that move. Well, that's going to be the other uh, attack that Illinois will use here. Douglas down low against Reed or try to go against Cross. Alan Bezier hooking on the go. Rebound comes outside to Douglas. Illinois has got it. 14-7, the Illini lead. Good way in the first half. Stolen away, then retaken by Douglas. Another steal by Douglas. Jump shot the outside. Rebound put up by Leonard inside. Scott Mintz put that first shot up there. He was off the iron, but uh, got to give credit. The Illini doing a pretty good job on the boards, the offensive boards right now. That's the biggest lead, nine points at 16 to seven. 10 minutes to go in the first half. Illinois collapsing on the middle inside. And double teaming cross. Here's a drive by Bullock, and he walks to the ball. Traveling by Bullock. Illinois gets it. The crowd is really picking things up here now for Lou Henson's Illini, who won 18 and lost eight. And they're probably just a couple of victories away now from a positive NCAA bid. That comes a sharp shooter in for Purdue. Kurt Clausen can hit from about anywhere inside the building. Turnover six to one Purdue. A hawking Illinois man for man. That's right. Some of those. There's a holding foul by Bullock. Purdue has been caught short in its man for man defense. Cross got two early fouls. There was Bullock, unable to keep up with his man. Purdue lose to use his own for a while. That didn't help. Here's Greg Eifert, who may be the best defensive player they've got at Purdue. Eifert now has come in the lineup. He was an early season starter, was injured, and lost his spot to Jim Bullock. He's just replaced Bullock at forward. On the line will be Anthony Welch. We go to the bonus here with 9.40 to go in the first half. It's be a one and one for Welsh. Here's a guy that really has improved since the season started. <laughs> Sophomore. We saw him in that first game when he hit five or six from the field in the second half against uh, Purdue. He was a big surprise last year the way he came on. He just gets better and better. Leaves a lot of Michigan schools wondering why they didn't recruit him more. Imagine he came out of Grand Rapids. There was a write-up not too long ago in one of the Detroit papers and both Michigan and Michigan State coaches saying the same thing. We don't know how we let him get out of state. 18 to 7 Illinois. The lead can gradually mount here. Double turnover. Here comes Harper. Harper driving for the layup, and that blew it. 19 in a row, and Harper stops the string on the layup. Back comes Ricky Hall. Ball's jarred loose, Illinois got it, Scott Mintz. Well, Hall's turned it over twice, and that's seven now for Purdue. But he got back, and he showed some quickness that he could protect 
on defense and get back there in a hurry in that last possession. Long outside shot by Douglas. Rebound ripped off by Russell Cross. Well, Cross makes a difference when he's in there for the Boilermakers. No question. 18-7, Illinois. Clawson again has the ball stripped, but it's out of bounds. So Derek Harper string ends at 19 in a row, which we assume to be a Big Ten record. Records wow. were not kept for that over multiple games. Steve Reed now returns the guard. Lob to Cross on the alley oop, and he's fouled in the play by Metz. Uh, Not Leonard. Yeah, Leonard, of course, committing a foul here, but don't uh, don't say it was all his fault before knocking Cross off his feet. No way. Pass a little bit behind Cross. He had to lean back, and he really was off balance going in. Well, that was a good play that Purdue ran too. They set a solid screen for Cross. Here's Cross now with two free throws. That's Cross' fourth uh, point. He needs six tonight to tie for the eighth spot in Purdue's all-time scoring parade. He now has 1,428 points. Gene Parker has 1,430. Well, if I can take the stats uh, a little bit further and break it down, fourth in scoring in the conference, third in field goal in the conference, fourth in rebounding, and third in block shots. So without Purdue, or without Cross, Purdue have been in serious trouble this year. Mance, who stays in the lineup, to come Welsh, driving the cross off the dribble. Rebound is by Palambizio for Purdue. Palambizio's returned into a much better rebounder this year. 18 to eight, the lead is 10 by the line now, with eight minutes to go. Purdue has never led in the game, they tied it at two, then Illinois jumped immediately to a 10 or eight point lead. Broken up by Mance, but he can't hold it. Mitz made a good move on cross that time, but he couldn't hold the, what would have been the interception. Three minutes and 13 seconds for Purdue to get just one point. They've only got one over that time span. And the Illini getting two points in a minute and 58 seconds. So it's been good defense. A great defense. Illinois goes to Mance, the lob on the alley-oop to cross. Russell cross on a set play, went to the alley-oop. One of the favorite plays they like, of course, lobbing it in back. Just to the baseline and makes it look easy. Eight point lead for Illinois, 18 to 10. Seven and a half minutes to go in the first take. Derek Harper, top of the circle. Rebound ripped off for Purdue by Cross. Cross has just uh, moved into a tie for eighth place with his sixth point. All time Purdue. Eifert now, foul. Illinois beginning to build some foul troubles. Well, jammed up at that baseline. Eifert wanted some room and he did not get that room from Anthony Welch. Welch trying to slide in there and block, but he was called for blocking, lost a step. Greg Eifert, who was strictly an offensive player in high school in Fort Wayne, didn't really concentrate on defense until he came to college. And uh, through hard work, he's become probably the best defensive player that Gene Cady has at West Lafayette. A December ankle injury took him out of the starting lineup. But he's been a top man off the bench since. You got a bonus? Well, of course, he's up there in the forward position and right now breaking down the forwards and centers in comparison. Purdue, front line scored eight points, four rebounds, the line had 12 points and two rebounds. 18-11. Illinois' lead now dropped from 11 down to seven, so Purdue's in a little bit of a rally. There goes Leonard breaking away from his man. Rebound by Cross. Oh, Cross makes his present felt off the defensive board. 18-11. Oh, but surprise winner taking that shot from that far out. Oh, Illinois stays the man for man. Purdue now beginning to get a little bit better shots. Watch those hands. Using patience. There's a three point shot here in the Big Ten, but no shot clock. Inside it goes to Cross, and he is fouled. Oh, he is fouling on the play. Basket won't count. And if that's on Russell, then that's his third, and it is. All right, we'll watch it again. I think he came up with the arm before he took the pass. And trying to get clear, and he put the arm out straight, coming across the body of the opponent. Well, he has to sit down again. So Gene Cady got only two minutes play out of cost before his second personal foul. Comes back in here now. And That's a shooting foul. He cleared himself. Gets about five or six more minutes. He picks up his third. 
Now they're saying here that Cross had the ball, he wouldn't be shooting. But they're going to put Leonard on the line. I don't understand this. If Cross had the ball in foul, they should not be shooting the one and one. Foul must have come before he caught the ball. Leonard one and one. That had to be a cross had to foul Leonard to get open for the pass. And so the foul committed actually before we saw it. Yeah, that's what it was, Jim. The arm came up and it was pushing off of him, trying to get clear. Both ends by Leonard stretches the Illinois lead back to nine at 20 to 11, 640 to go. Very likelihood that on the line tonight for the winner of this game could be an NCAA berth. Of course, a lot more games left to play. Still a good chance both these teams might go. There goes Clawson charging on the inside, and a blocking foul is going to be called, I guess, Leonard. Oh, a lot of fans thought that Clawson would get called for the charging foul after he dished off into the corner. And we'll watch it again. Clawson going. Now you can see slipping over and not having position was the big guy trying to help out, and that was Leonard. You think so? I think so, because I saw him on the left side of that lane. Well, it's I don't awfully think he close. got there. Awfully close call. George Montgomery will come back in now for Illinois. That's Leonard's third. That's the number three foul on Leonard. Montgomery returns at center. Leonard probably the better defensive player of the two. Clawson one and one. He's a fine shooter, always has been. Missed a year or two of college basketball when he went for his church into South America on a missionary work. Don't be fooled just because he was doing missionary work. We watched him play against Skiles at Michigan State, and Skiles ended up taking six stitches in the mouth from an elbow from this young man because he knows how to play basketball. 20 to 13, seven point lead by Illinois. There's an outside shot by Winters, gonna be off the mark. Might not have been a good range for him. Purdue now can cut it to five. Game getting closer as we move along here. Purdue suddenly got back in the ball game. Jump shot by Bullock, gonna be short. Rebound tipped out to Derek Harper. Here comes Illinois on the break. Harper charges. Well, that's really going to bring a roar out of the fans now. Uh, I didn't think Bullock had possession, or position. <laughs> no way, but you see the arm come up there. A little bit of acting on Bullock's part, too, but you saw Douglas bring up the arm, or not Douglas, but rather Harper bring up the arm. Well, no comment. Here we go. 2013, seven-point lead by Illinois. I agree with you, though. I think uh, Bullock wasn't there. Illinois fans also agree with you. Yeah. Long with three-pointer by Clawson. Now he can really fill it up from three-point country. Okay, Boilermakers start to load up the howitzers. Well, here's a good test now for this young Illinois team, Chester Poise. There's Douglas blocked by Reed. Boy, these calls, we've had three of them, bang, 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 and it's been a guess which way it's gonna go. Oh, we're taking out a look. He was <laughs> definitely squared up. I would say that he was squared completely. And Gene so. Katie says, hey, what's going on? And folks out of this part of the country, out of Big Ten territory, certainly uh, may have been reading in the papers this week that one coach has been highly critical of the officiating of the Big Ten this year, and of course, it's been Bobby Knight at NBA. Bonus shot will come to Douglas. 21-16. Well, it's a tough call to make. Toughest in the game, charged and blocked. 22 to 16. Illinois gets back a couple of precious points they've lost. Five minutes, 20 seconds to go in the first half. This game really selling into an exciting affair. Steal by Harper. And the long arms. Harper will take it in. And he blew the layup again. Back comes Steve Reed from the outside. He hits. Only two. Was not outside the line. Well, I'll give Reed a second chance. I don't know what he did to Harper down there. Harper was acting like he'd been fouled from behind. It was no whistle. There's the lead into Harper for the layup. He missed it out when I well puts it up in close. Well, after Harper hit his 19th in a row, he's met three shots right under the basket. 24 to 18. 
all of them pretty heavily contested, we might add. Six point lead for Illinois. Line is still man for man. Harper's been able to hold Steve Reed only two points so far. Trying to get inside, there's Clawson outside, and he's fouled. Personal foul on the play, and Harper or Clawson hit it from the corner. His shooting now beginning to get Purdue back in the game. Quick release, and uh, nothing but net, and at the same time, just as that ball got there, Winters, or rather, I believe it was Welch, called for the foul. Well, and that was not on Clawson, so this could be a four-point play. Palambizio's going to go to the line for the one-and-one, one, so he could also get two points. And Purdue could be big back within two. The Boilermakers have been very businesslike here in their comeback. Yep. Bonus shot, cuts it to three. It's the guy who hit the winning shot against Illinois at Purdue with four seconds to go. The line I will not soon forget that. Neither will the Boilermakers. That was a big win for them then. Purdue's won 17, Illinois 18. Both are eight and five in the Big Ten. Two-point game, 24-22. Four big ones that time for Purdue. Illinois led it by 11 points at one time, and now Purdue's back with it, two. Good defense by Eifert. Inside goes Montgomery and scores. What a power move by George Montgomery. Just about in the last two minutes and 16 seconds, Purdue with 11 points, the Illini getting their fifth and sixth there. 26-22, four-point lead for the Illini. Good fake by Clausen, gets it free. Clausen on the move. Eifert powers up inside. And rebound is down to Douglas. That comes Illinois. Douglas off the dribble. 28-22, Illini back up by six on the... Moving shot by Douglas. Yeah, a pretty move by the Bruce Douglas, the kid from Quincy, Illinois, and strictly taking advantage of Clawson, who is slow getting back on defense. I've never seen so many players on the floor as we've had here. Palomizio in traffic can't get it down. That was a tough break because Palomizio put up a good shot. Boy, he had three guys circled him. I don't know how he got the shot away. 28-22 Illinois leads, two minutes, 45 seconds to go in the first half. Derek Harper from long range gets his touchback. Well, the secret for Harper is just don't shoot the layups. Eight point lead with four, six points in a row now by Illinois after Purdue had cut it to two. Solid defense, there goes Reed away from Harper and the crashing the boys is Bullock for a foul. Winners had perfect position. Bullock picks up his second. Exactly right position did the story here. And Bullock comes in from behind, slaps him right on the hands and the arm, and rams him with the body. That'll bring up one winners to the free throw line. 23, Philip. Jim Bullock. Been uh, so steady since he took over the spot from Eifert back in December. One of the best athletes on the Purdue team. Winners for the one and one. And Illinois' free throwing has been exceptionally good. Only Harper's missed. Other than that, the line is eight for eight. Mintz check it back in now, and they'll uh, sit down and believe it's well. Bonus shot coming to winners. Now here comes Kevin Von Temp, and they will give Douglas a rest. Mintz is back in the lineup. So is Kevin Von Temp, who's a senior also, 6'2", from Morton, Illinois. Played 21 games for 27 points. Over the back goes winner. Well, that was not a very, not a very thoughty move. Cost winners his third foul. And he may have to sit down with 222 to go in the first half. Just about the same thing that Bullock, uh, Bullock did moments ago. And uh, this time he is on the receiving end. We'll go to the line, of course. Well, Lou Henson wanted to rest Anthony Welch. Welch is not a real physical guy like winners. But he has to get Welch right back in there. Winners will have to sit down after his third. And here will be Jim Bullock on the line for Purdue. 
That could be quite a story in the second half with some of the big men having the foul problems they've had already in the first half. Montgomery has the rebound, and Illinois has got it with a nine-point lead, 31-22. And suddenly Purdue's had a drought. Seven straight points for Illinois, and Purdue has not been able to stretch. Backdoor tip, intercepted by Bullock. Nice play by Bullock. Third turnover that time by the Illini. Douglas out of there. Well, they had Harper bringing that ball down. Well, he was the point guard last year. He's got those skills. Yep. Makes him so much more valuable. Ricky Hall back running the attack now for Purdue. Boston's out of there for the moment. Oh, Boston's still in. Oh, now almost a steal by Harper. Oh, the guy's amazing, isn't he, with those long arms? Like a Pope and a mongoose. Great defense by Illinois. Tremendous. Now there's a foul on Palambizio. Well, you young fellas watching basketball, there's why defense is so important. It frustrates an opponent, keeps them from scoring, and oftentimes winds up with something good for your team, like Palambizio committing that foul. And they turn it right back for the 10th time. Just lost his cool, really, when Welch came back in the ball game playing some pretty good defense. They got frustrated and just gave, gave him a pretty good shove to draw the foul. Illinois has gotten its lead back with defense after Purdue had pulled within two. Almost an air ball. 31 22, nine points. Double dribble by Hall. He knew it. He knew it. He started to pass, and apparently his intended receiver turned his back, and he was forced into a turnover. Back now in Illinois, and of course, the three Big Ten teams ranked this week in the top 20 of the nation polls are Indiana, Iowa, and Ohio State. And the next question is, how about Illinois and Purdue? Two teams that are tied for third place. The Big Ten race right behind Indiana and Ohio State. Neither is ranked. The winner of this game, I got a hunch, though, may get a spot before yep. too long. Lou Henson, uh, the coach of Illinois, saying that he figured that it was going to take 21 victories to get a call. and. Uh, Right now, Purdue is 17 and 6 overall, 18 and 8 for the Illini. Coming up at the halftime, interesting feature on the University of Illinois and Coach's Corner with Lou Henson, brought to you by Budweiser Light. There goes Harper driving and beating off. Uh, let's see, we're going to be blocker charge here. I think they're going to whistle a block by Eifert. Blocking by Eifert on a really strong penetration by Harper. Oh, watch it again. I think it'll be Bullock that slides over here. We'll check it. I've heard of Bullock. I think it's possibly Bullock. It is. Bullock, okay. Well, that's going to be his third. So you got Cross with three, and Bullock now with three. And Harper on the line where he's 0 for 2. We got a freshman that just checked in, Jim. Herb Robinson, who has to check in now because of the foul trouble of some of the big men. Freshman that's 6'5, uh, 202 out of Lansing, uh, Michigan. Well, he played in nine of the 23 games for Purdue. He's a great leaper, great jumper. 32 22. One minute, three seconds to go. There's the team foul. You see this, but a rather fouling ball game. There's uh, Robinson. Another Robinson in the league this score here is Stu Robinson, Indiana. This is Herb Robinson. Eifert in with the left hand hook. Eifert inside makes a nifty move to score. Well, that gives uh, Purdue now 8 of 19. So right around that 40% mark, slightly better. And Illini 11 of 24, 458. They cleared out for Harper off the dribble. Rebound down by Kirk Clausen. I thought Illinois might so hey, hold it for a shot there. Less than 30 seconds to go. But Purdue gets another chance trailing by 8, 32-24. They might look for a three-point shot here at the end. With 10 seconds, they're going to wait for one shot. Three-pointer by Clausen, way outside, too long. Harper's got it with one second. He lets it go from 60 feet. And what it counted, but it's over everything, and the first half is over here at the University of Illinois tonight. But it's been a dandy so far in the Big Ten, the battle for third place. And the halftime score, 32-24, Illinois in the lead, so Purdue's going to make up eight points. Individual scoring in the first half. 
Kurt Clausen came off the bench to leave Purdue with seven. Cross played a less than half of the first half against the D-Ray with yep. six. That's right. And oh. Valabuzio with six there, and a couple of fouls as we saw. And we'll take the Illini, seven points by winners. Now and look at that balance, yeah. would you? That's right, that's exactly what it is. By the way, if we break down for both teams, the backcourt stars, and so much was said talking about when we came on the air tonight about the outstanding quickness of the, and shooting. Purdue, the guards have accounted for nine points and five rebounds. The Illini, 11 points and six rebounds. The well, seven of the nine always came off the bench and not the starting five yeah. backcourt. Purdue's got the ball. We start the second half. Purdue down by eight. Purdue's been as a mob, and it's broken up inside by Winners. And that's the fourth foul on Ephraim Winners. Illinois star freshman forward. Quickly in deep trouble. Now, Winners had got over there pretty good. But he was a little bit... Couldn't get up in the air. That was the only thing that caused the foul. Well, he made contact with Russell Cross. But he saw the play coming, and he just didn't have enough quickness or the jumping ability. Gene Cady might have been saying Cross was going to the shoot, but he did not have the ball. Uh, Alley-oop lob. Winners has to sit down. George Montgomery comes in to replace it. Palombizio, top of the round. Does not get three points out. Well, that was very, very close. Palomizio gets his eighth point. Purdue does get the first score. That's what they wanted. 32-26. Montgomery posted down low against Palomizio. Here's Montgomery turning on Palomizio and banks it in. Oh, Montgomery, who had to come and replace winners, makes the first possession payoff for the Illini. 34-26. Illinois back to his eight point lead the head of the half. Uh, that move we saw by Montgomery, that's his favorite way to try to get to the basket to force him the other way and he can't do it sometimes. Cross and heavy traffic, cannot get it. Illinois back with an eight point lead, there goes Welch. And Illinois goes back to a 10 point lead, 36-26 in the first minute and a half of the second half. Well, like a little slow, going back to cover on defense. He was slow setting up on defense, his man beat him completely. Tough uphill battle now for Purdue. Down the middle goes Bullock scoring and he is fouled. Boy, Bullock split the defense and drew the foul for Montgomery and that's three on Big George. That's exactly right. I think a little mad at himself because he didn't do the job on the fence this time. Slices in, puts the field goal in and will go to the line, drawing the foul. Purdue needs the scoring of Bullock. He did not score in the first half. Lou Henson has got problems. Several players getting in foul trouble. Great point play by Bullock. 36-29, and just like that, Purdue gets back within seven. Bruce Douglas, who tried to take advantage of uh, his height advantage in the first half, over Reed, now is content to be the feeder and the quarterback. There goes the inside the Harper for a layup, and he's fouled. Harper beat the man, Ricky Hall, that time. And he could get a three-point play. Second time he's been in the night, and this is the first time they run the little backdoor play in this ball game involving Harper. And Hall was just standing there looking around, where is my man? So he's Harper. beating Hall outside once, Jim, and inside once. Got such a height advantage. He's six foot four, tremendously long arms. Ricky Hall, six one, but uh, that time he was had no chance at it, 39-29. So three-point plays off set, and Illinois is back up by 10. Illinois goes to a zone. Well, they were Good. successful with that zone before, early in the ball game. Yeah, well, I think here, really, Henson's losing using it because of the foul trouble. It's a pretty smart move. And there's a push off by Leonard, who tried to fight through. Leonard might not realize they're in a zone. Gets right. his fourth. He battles cross on this one. The official standing just about in front of him on this one at the baseline. Cross doing a pretty good job of uh, getting a little theatrics in there, too. I don't know whether that was Leonard's assignment or not, but they're playing a zone defense, and Leonard was trying to get to his man in the corner. It's the fourth foul on Leonard, so Leonard winners with four apiece. Back of the game is Scott Mintz. Now Illinois definitely is in his zone. They lead by 10, but they're in foul trouble. 
with the home court advantage, and Purdue's got a battle of hostile crowd here to get back in this one. Try to work a little triangle over there on the zone, didn't work. Draw three-point shot by Reed. Rebound will be grabbed by the quick walk. Guard Ricky Hall. That'll give Purdue another chance. Big offensive rebound and again, Roy, it was the guard doing it. Exactly right. Lob pass unsuccessful that time. Well, it was about because of Douglas. As a dish off, broken up by Ricky Hall. Well, there's Gene Cady. Said, I think my man's the best defensive guard, Ricky Hall. They showed that for him right there. Hart Little hit success, it's like Derek Harper. Harper that time dishing off. He had a sure two of going to the basket. He elected to dish off, and it was knocked out of his hands and it cost him a turnover. Well, you got to remember, the only shots he missed the first half were layups, though. I don't know how sure it would be. Battle on the rebound. The personal foul will be on Ricky Hall of Purdue. Oh, Hall now gets three. Purdue's not without its foul trouble, Z. Bullock crossed Hall with three. We saw the Palomizio shot off the far rim, and Hall trying to get the rebound, and he commits the foul, making body contact on Derek Harper. Two team fouls apiece on both sides in the first three minutes of the second half. 39-29, Illinois by 10. Douglas driving off the dribble. Bruce Douglas. Showing great balance in the air and body control to score. Beat, and the, beat Reed. Reed was calling for help. Somebody to come out and get in front. That's the biggest lead so far for Illinois. 12 points. For the moment, Illinois has stopped those alley oop lobs to cross. Pretty tough passing there, but Illinois sticks right in the zone. They swing at the weak side. Ricky Hall, but Montgomery covered him up. Need to penetrate the zone, get it in the middle, or try the weak side lob. Palombizio from the corner. They're not hitting the outside shot. Rebound, Palombizio hooks. Rebound is grabbed by Welch, and he's fouled on the play. Foul is by Bullock, and that's four fouls now on Jim Bullock of Purdue. Biggest lead of the game held right now by Illinois, 41 to 29 over Purdue. They Illini just out hustling them so far, beating them on the boards. Here in the early parts of the first half, although Purdue held the lead in the first half. Right now in turnovers, Purdue has 11, Illinois four. Credit that a lot to the scrappy defense. No, oh, it does. You know, they're talking about the records of these clubs. The Illini very tough here on their home court. They've lost only once this year, winning 11 times, 11 and one, losing only Indiana. And Purdue really has not been that good of a, a team on the road, especially in the conference this year, Boilermakers two and four. Well, Purdue's got a very tough week next week. They gotta play Indiana and Ohio State, both on the road. There's Scott Mintz, has had to come in. Montgomery gets free, blocked beautifully by Cross. Great defensive play. Illinois won a goal to him, but that looked like a good block. Reed the other end, gives in to Eifert. Taken away by Montgomery on a block. Both teams playing, very aggressive defense. So far, so far in the second half, Purdue two for seven from the field. The Illini four for four. That, of course, does not include the turnover. There goes another one. In by Wells, five for five. 43-29, and a 14-point lead by the Illini. Boy, the old reservations on the war path here tonight. Chief Alenowick has been strutting around the court. Lob inside the cross, and he walks. Traveling that cross. Illinois is really concentrated on cross. Yeah, it's doing a little shuffling down there now. Had he put the ball on the floor, he'd been all right. 12th turnover by the Boilermakers. Well, if he'd gone up for a shot, he probably would have been fouled. Here goes uh, Douglas now away the baseline, shooting over Reed. <laughs> Douglas uses height advantage to good stay at that time for the line eye. 45-29 and a 16-point lead. Well, forget Reed, of course, is the smallest guy in a big 10 at 5-10. 13-5 now. Illinois has outscored Purdue since halftime. Inside, broken up by Douglas. Another steal by Douglas. He leads the Illinois team in steals. Between them, he and Harper came into this game with 125 steals. That's amazing off one team. 
Welch over Eifert. Illinois shooting is just unconscious. And Purdue is going to have to call timeout. And the Illini has scored eight straight points. And checking a little bit further, they have had 11 unanswered points. Illinois has half seven for eight from the field. Purdue only two for eight. Purdue now trying to break out of what could be a costly drought here. Could cost them the game. Purdue has not scored in a little over four minutes. 11 straight, the Illinois put in. Illinois back on the man for man. They go to cross, cross, partially blocked in there by Mitz. Purdue stopped again by the Illinois defense. 47 to 29. That was Scott Mintz. And Douglas needs help. Almost got a five second call. Off the little guy Reed. There it goes. A blocking foul. Ought to be on Clausen. Not quick enough to stay with Harper. Clausen's first foul. That's four team fouls now against Purdue in the second half. Illinois has committed two. Line eye in the Big Ten, fifth in scoring overall in the conference, and fifth in defense. 18 point lead by Illinois. Scott Nett over man, and there goes Harper to follow. Loose ball, and Harper will save it, but Purdue's got it. Eifert throws it away. Right in the hands of Nett. Back up Douglas to Illinois, gets to Harper. Kept up once, and now Purdue Palapigio pulls it down. Boy, what action we have here. Don't count Purdue out yet. They can play in streaks. And there's a personal foul on Scott Mintz. Just foul, whistle across. Everybody looking around, you can hear the call go out. Does a little shoving here, trying to give him some room, but he shoved him just as he put the two arms up. And call for the foul. Palabizio checks out. Boy, turnovers tell a vivid story. Do they not? Purdue's coughed up the ball 13 times. Illinois will do that to you, especially with a Derek Harper in there. Leonard returns with four fouls. Number 43, Brian Leonard. Replacing George Montgomery. Montgomery also has four. Ted, oh. Ted Benson just comes in for Purdue. It's the first time we've seen him play this year. And Rowanski takes it up in the middle, and it's taken away. Welch has got it. Also in there is Gattis for Purdue now. Skid airs on by Harper. Harper hits from the kilometer for his 10th point, and it's a 20-point lead for Illinois. Herb Robinson was a man that was supposed to pick him up, and he did not, and he is just into the game. Rowinski breaks the dry spell. Rowinski scored at 12.09 to go after Illinois had scored, I think, 15 in a row. And they had not been able to open up anything in the middle to get cross free. Rosinski comes in there and gets the first ball, and two points the first time he gets his hand on the ball. Well, top a head fake. Rebound, Purdue. Cross has got it. I tell you, Purdue could get back in the game. There's Robinson, looks on the inside, gives to Cross, takes it up in a crowd and scores. They picked up the tempo and they brought Cross out a little bit and actually had him driving to the basket by about three or four steps and went airborne. Now that's Purdue four in a row. And Purdue now coming back and Illinois calls for timeout. That could be a little surprise here at Ann Arbor maybe for the Buckeyes and congratulations to Bill Frieder and uh, his staff and the highly touted Antoine Gilbert out of the Detroit Public School System. He, uh, he has made a commitment to go to Michigan. All right, here is uh, Gene Katie's call on two freshman guards. There goes Douglas on a drive. And Douglas just beat one of them. Bruce Douglas, 12 points. For the precocious rookie from Quincy, 51-33. All right, with that zone again now. Off it by Matt Gaddis. And inside, Purdue's cross slams it free. Russell cross. Uh, Fans thought Cross grabbed the rim and shut out a technical. Let's see. And I thought he did too. Hello there. Right there. Inside, there's a block, and that'll be goaltending across. Give the basket to Leonard. Cross goaltending at the other end. 53 35. Illinois maintaining its big lead now at 18 points. Line eye 10 for 15 for the field now, and Purdue 5 for 11. Make it 5 for 12. Bad guard play is still a story for Purdue. Now two freshmen, Mac Gaddis and Herb Robinson are in there. There's Robinson, here's Gaddis. Gaddis off the dribble, short. 
Rebound, Leonard, stolen by Gaddis. Takes it inside, and he is fouled as he scores by Leonard, who's out of the game. Big play by a little freshman, 6-1. Matt Gaddis from Indianapolis. After his miss, he followed his own shot, and he gets Leonard, a big guy, out of the game. Could be a three-point play in addition for Gaddis. Well, you saw that one shot that he took just prior to that, before he got his own rebound. He uh, warmed up a little bit at halftime, but still a little bit cold, but came right back and good and aggressive basketball by the freshman. Leonard goes out of the game. Now that in itself is the great disaster because Henson still has players left, but Ephraim Winters or George Montgomery, whom he may have to call on, he's gonna send in Montgomery. Montgomery has three, and Winters, if he's gonna have to come back in, has four, and if he loses those two, then he's going to be getting very, very thin. That's exactly right. And Montgomery has a little quickness in there, but uh, Cross, what are we going down for three, uh, three, uh, three fouls? Three fouls for Montgomery and four on winners. Winners remains on the bench. Cross playing a little more aggressive on the offensive boards than he did in the first half after he got those three quick fouls. Well, Gaddis is not a good percentage shooter, but that doesn't always tell the story, does it? Three-point play, and it's 53-38. Purdue back within 15. Why a little pressure this time for the first time this evening. Uh, Purdue's picked up five points of that big lead in about three minutes. They have over 10 minutes to go. Inside, Montgomery for a layup. Out of position. Rebound will be by Purdue. Robinson's got it. There's his jumping ability that Ray Lane was telling you about. Well, you got to be careful with Harper. A young freshman will learn in a hurry. You don't take liberties with Harper around. Rolinski feeds it off to Gaddis. Gaddis to left side. Up goes Benson. Rebound put up by Rolinski. Taken down by Illinois. Welsh lost his uh, footing. Very physical. That goes Douglas down the middle. Has to be a blocking foul on Purdue. Robinson's the guilty man. His first one. Trying to block it up. Now he goes through. That was a pretty good block shot, but the whistle had sounded before that ball was released. I, I tell you, these guys look like they may be playing for George Allen before the night's over. <laughs> and there are more players on the floor in this game than I can remember any other game this year. It's been really a physical battle. Bruce Douglas at the line. I tell you, it's hard to hit your free throws because you're still seeing triple when you get up there. <laughs> That's right. Again, we'll remind the fans that these two clubs are the ninth and tenth in free throwing, uh, free throwing in the Big Ten. 54-38. Illinois staying in command. Purdue trying to get a rally going here. The coaches are pacing the sideline, leading cheers. Inside cross. Basket's not going to count. He was fouled first by Harper. Probably a pretty fortunate foul for Illinois because Cross will have had it. Yep, and how he's going back up there and he's put the ball up and rolled around the rim and went in. Harper called for the foul. He was trying to help out at the baseline. And they've been very successful at that low post of jamming it up pretty well tonight. Gaddis outside, three-point shot. Matt Gaddis gets a home run. He's gotten uh, six points in a hurry now for Purdue. 54-41, Purdue back within 13 points. Gaddis who played high school ball at Pike High School in Indianapolis, a great, fine outside shooter. Derek Harper, plenty of time. Kept alive by Montgomery, then pulled down by Ted Benson. Ted Benson, a senior from Atlanta, done a pretty good job since he's come in. Gene Cady has really gone deep on his bench now to get this team. Robinson off the dribble. Will not go. Rebound ripped off by Welch for Illinois. Illinois leads it by 13 with 8.50 to go. The intensity level of this game has been something and remains so. No love lost between these two, but there's so much on the line here. Postseason bids, not the least of them. Tell you that Purdue bench is playing some pretty good defense. Season does the end for that for this game, but the winner gets third place all alone behind Indiana and Ohio State. There goes the Mets. Rebound to the smallest guy on the floor, Mac Gaddis for Purdue. Gaddis had a hot hand. Wolanski passed up the shot. Robinson won't. And Wolanski gets it back, and he's fouled by Mintz. 
Scott Metz gets fouled number two. Yeah, Metz going up that time and leans, actually leans on Ros Rosinski. Watch it again now, there he goes right into him. Ray, I think when Scott, when uh, Leonard fouled out, it's the first Illinois player to foul out this year in any game. A remarkable a record. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Now you can see Ephraim Winters has returned with four personal fouls, so Illinois' drought may uh, turn into a flood here tonight. No player fouled out, and now they've got one out and two on the verge. Yeah, first time uh, in conference play. They had in the non-conference session, though. Polenski on the line. Good rebound by Crosswell, lay in. Cross follows up with a big basket for Purdue. 54, third, 43. Lay this down now to 11. One more basket and Purdue will have the lead cut down in single figures. And from Winters on a pivot shot. And it's gonna go out of bounds to Illinois. Purdue players were up there, but it bounced over their heads. Cross a little more active as we said than he was in the first half. Now with six rebounds. And uh, this time we'll go again to Illinois. I think he's active this game with these two coaches. <laughs> They've earned their money here tonight. Team fouls. Will not count. Will not count. There was a foul on Scott Mintz on the play on that attempted lob inbounds. Mintz is guilty of his third foul. That's going to be a one-and-one, one. so oh, it's on the bonus. Costly, uh, Jim, but Mintz pushing that time. And that, uh, he might go out of there now. Well, he will, and Montgomery comes in to replace him, but Montgomery comes in with three fouls of his own on his shoulders. A lot of time to go, seven minutes, 41 seconds. Russell Cross has been trying to lead this for two team back in here. It's been an unusual cast with him. Rowinski, Gaddis, Robinson, and right now, Hall. So, three guard lineup for Purdue. Cross with his 13th point. So, right in bounds at Purdue. Wolinski throws it up, and he is fouled where it goes. Wolinski gets it fouled by Montgomery, and Purdue is getting back in this ball game. All right, coaching does that. And there's a coach at Purdue, of course, Gene Katie, who says, when you get the ball in a tight situation, put it up, draw the foul. Wolinski, that's exactly what he does. He's got three guys on top of him. The call has already gone out. They get the two, and they'll go to the line for one more. And if he hits this, the lead will be down to seven points. Rebound by Welch. 54-46, Purdue fought from 20 behind to within eight with a lot of time to go, seven and a half minutes remaining. Great comeback by the Boilermakers. That goes Welch up the middle, feeds down inside, and it's out of bounds. Welch was in the air to feed, and he tried to give it into Winters for a layup, but he couldn't hold it. Big turnover. Purdue can get within six points. A three-pointer will make it five. All right, Illinois now with eight turnovers. Their ratio is picking up a little bit. Katie's got to be very happy with his bench tonight. Yeah, there goes Redskins passing again. Rebound Welch, slipped away and lost out of bounds. Hall and uh, Welch battling for it that time and off the fingertips of Anthony Welch. Well, Ricky Hall's the guy who'll be credited with that one because Welch had it and Hall contested it. Great point shot by Gaddis. There he is. Almost. And a rebound foul by Rowinski. So Purdue gets caught this time, and that's going to be team foul number six. Old-fashioned hammer job. Coming right down at town. Reap the elbows and everything else. Well, Rowinski does know his own strength. 54-46, eight-point lead. Remember the first game these two played. Went to the final four seconds with Illinois leading at Purdue, and Purdue's Palombizio scored and won it for the Boilermakers. It looked like if they might be out of this one when Illinois ran up a 20-point lead with 13 straight points here in the second half. But Purdue has bounced off the floor again. Douglas driving over Gattis. Rebound Purdue. Lewinsky has it. 
Purdue got another chance to cut into the lead. 54-46. Illinois' lead is dwindling. Robinson in traffic hits. Herb Robinson in heavy traffic hits his first basket of the game. He was late going airborne. We talked about his looping ability. He got up there and he was just hanging there to make that critical shot. And Illinois is forced to call another timeout here with over six minutes remaining. I wonder, the local papers in Champaign, Illinois, they ran a story that Lou Hinson did not go into his patented spread four-corner attack because some of his own fans booed that tactic. But here's a point where his lead's getting away from him. And six minutes to go. I wonder if Henson is going to spread out the court here. I don't know, Jimmy. You know, I wouldn't be surprised. The other thing, you asked him about that. He said, well, we'd like to use it on the road. But I'd say it's also some of the pressure by the fans. But we may see it. By the way, Purdue in the last four minutes has scored 10 points. Illinois only one point in four minutes. They're not spreading it out right yet. They're still in the one four seven. Purdue has pulled within six points. Inside the well, to his foul by Robinson. Young freshman Herb Robinson, over aggressive. That's 17 fouls, and now Illinois goes to the bonus shot. Yeah, Robinson that time just sort of leaning on his opponent to draw that foul. Official attendance now, they announce at 13,507. 13,507. Well, well, the Big Ten's closing in on what may be an all time attendance uh, record 12,458 is the old record. And right now it's 12,338. That was a big miss. Purdue fast break. Robinson fouled off the break by her Derek Harper. Number three on Harper. Well, Harper almost got away there with a big defensive play. Good bounce pass by Gaddis. Robinson driving in and coming in from behind was the culprit that time. Harper, and he got him right over the arm. You know, you're talking about the tennis last week in the Big Ten. They averaged 14,444. Well, they could set a new NCAA record again. Oh, the free, missed free throws drive coaches to gray hairs and sometimes bald heads. A while ago, we had a miss by Welch, and now here's one by Robinson. Purdue, 10th in the conference at the line. 54-49, it's the closest Purdue has been. They're trailing by five. They're down by eight at the half, and Illinois quickly ran away. Harper in trouble, loose ball, and who's gonna get it? It's gonna be Purdue. Ricky Hall, great play by Russell Cross. Oh, the big guy's made plays tonight. Here's Gaddis hitting. Gaddis hits for Purdue. 54-51, Purdue within three. Unbelievable comeback by the Boilermakers. They were 20 points behind just six minutes ago. How fast you can change in this game. Montgomery baseline, Montgomery, Illinois. Big miss, Purdue's got it. They can get within one. One eye has dried up on their shooting completely. Boy, the momentum of this game has turned drastically around in favor of Purdue. And Gene Cady's done it with a patched up lineup, including two freshmen, Mac Gaddis, Herb Robinson. And Robinson That's has it. four points and a couple of rebounds and gets a short tie. Three pointer ties it. Robinson, the freshman, ties it with a three point basket. And it's 54 54, the first time Purdue's been even since it was two to two. And Purdue has never led in the game. Oh boy, four minutes, 40 seconds to go. Now Illinois spreads out in the yep. four corners. Illinois goes to the spread. Katie's asking for a double team on the ball. Right now, Purdue's in a straight man for man. Illinois looking. This is not necessarily a stall now. They might be looking for a score. This could be an offensive attack. Looking for the back door. There with the back door cut. Well, they tried to send Welch into that back door that time. Or you may see somebody try to drive it if they find the seam open. I'll tell you, Illinois is so well equipped to run this with Douglas and Harper both in lineup. you got two guys who can play in the middle of the four corners, and that's such a key position to play. I'm surprised they didn't go to this with a six-point lead, though. 54-54 tie. Three minutes, 50 seconds to go. Well, he's gone to it and lost a couple of times. We saw that in one game they lost in Iowa when they had the lead. Went to the four corners, and Iowa played a great defensive strategy and uh, won the game, came from behind. Purdue has wiped out a 20-point Illinois lead. 
Well, they almost okay. uh, That's right. had a combination back door there. And Robinson doing a good job that time and covered, prevented that back door. Now, once you pick up the dribble, you gotta be uh, sure, make sure you're gonna get an open man. Well, over three minutes, an awful long time to hold the ball. He's a career high here tonight for Gaddis and Robinson. And Robinson has already scored six points, his five have been in previous high. Gaddis has scored eight, and he had scored six against Evansville. 54-54, now under three minutes to go. Still a long, long time. Douglas taken away by Roinsky. Purdue played very patiently on the defense, and they get the turnover. Now Purdue has never led in the game. They've never led. And they got a chance now with a score tie. Time out here for Purdue. Katie is gonna set up his strategy with 2.35 to go and a tie score. Looked as if Douglas that time just could not make up his mind when he started to drive, whether he wanted to take the shot or whether he wanted to pass it off. It was a little bit slow and he turned it over. Talking about the freshman, Jeff, the Illini have used the freshman in their lineup tonight have turned in a total of 20 points and five rebounds. For Purdue, the Boilermakers freshmen have contributed 15 points and three rebounds, unofficially. Well, I want to see what Purdue does now against Indiana and Ohio State if they win this game with Gaddis and Robinson playing such big roles because he obviously benched Clausen and Hall and Reed and went to these young kids. And they have been in there as Purdue came back. 54-54, the score was 49 to 29. So that is 25 to six. That uh, 20, 25 to five, that Purdue has outscored Illinois. That's a tremendous rally, especially on the road. And they gotta hand it to Gene Cady and the Boilermakers. I tell you, I think Gene Cady right now, with 235 left and crossing the lineup with three fouls on him. Still a couple to go. He had the three in the first half. I'd go to cross. I'd try to force it into cross and I'd make him work and see if he can't do the points. I think it'll happen that way. Well, they're gonna look for a good shot. Because now they got the ball in their coat. They can uh, hold, look it down for a good shot here. They're not in any kind of a parent stall. They'd like to score and put the pressure on Illinois. Kick Illinois out of the four corners. Well, Montgomery doing a good job denying the ball inside the cross. It's a tough situation here for young freshmen for Purdue, but they have uh, played the role. It goes Gaddis, blocked down by Montgomery. Winters has got it. Gaddis tried to go inside. There's the ball almost got away from Harper. They were trying to call timeout. 1.53 to go. I gotta go to the four quarter. Ooh, almost a middle blunder by Illinois. Yep, that's After right. Getting a big defensive play from Montgomery. 142 to go. Illinois has the ball with a story time. Now they're in the four corner spread. Looking for the backdoor cut, keeping the open middle. There's the time in the right hand corner, minute and a half. Try to do a little trap work, Purdue, if they can. Well, they're trying to do a jump switch, draw a charge, break up a pass. Right now, they're just playing very patiently here to see if Illinois will make another mistake and not giving them anything easy. Impressed with the composure that Gaddis has out there for a freshman. Illinois can call timeout three more times, so can Purdue. Less than a minute now. Illinois might just stall it down to about 20 seconds or so and call a timeout. Or they might just try to go to the end. I think they're committed now to go to the last shot. Yeah, I think so. They fake the back door. Ricky Hall, a very dangerous defensive player on Harper. Want to bet overtime? Good be. Less than a half minute to go. Won't be long now. 20 seconds. Timeout. Illinois wants another timeout. Yeah. There it is. 14 seconds to go. Illinois calls timeout now to set up the final 14 seconds. 
and they'll try to get the last shot. Well, wouldn't it be something if it came down to what we had at Purdue? At that time, Purdue won it. Now Illinois is in the driver's seat. Okay, don't go away. We want to thank the staff of these two fine universities for their assistance with tonight's telecast. For Purdue University, Athletic Director George King, Jr., Head Basketball Coach Gene Cady, Sports Information Director Jim Brugink, and the Assistant Sports Information Director Bob Walters, who's here with the team and very helpful. For the University of Illinois, Athletic Director Neil R. Stoner, Head Basketball Lou Henson, the coach and Sports Information Director Tab Bennett and his assistant, Dale Ratterman. You see Lou talking with his assistants here. He has not talked to his players as yet during this timeout. Well, he will in a minute. I will remind you, the executive producer of Big Ten Basketball is Leonard Klumpus. Tonight's game has been produced by Daryl Landrum and directed by Gary Klim. Associate producers are Paul Carlson and Marcia Turner. Assistant director is Skip Desjardin. Technical manager is Steve Ulrich. Big Ten television coordinator is Jeff Elliott. Production facilities were provided by Cruise Unlimited, Crestwood, Kentucky, and Midwest Video Industries, Kansas City, Missouri. And our statistician tonight is Alan Karpik. Best in the Big Ten. That's exactly right. Hats off to him. He should have a lot of medals on him for the job that he has done. Well, well, here we come to the, another dramatic finish for Metro Sports in the Big Ten. How many we had? 12 out of 14. And now we're down with 14 seconds to go on the tie score. Well, the big guys, the forwards and centers, Bonnie for 35 points for Purdue and 21 rebounds. The Illini, 31 points and 16 rebounds. And I got to think first choice might be the winners. Next choice back in to Derek Harper. I think I'll go with Harper. Let's see. 10 seconds to go. Won't be long now. Can Illinois win it there at the end? It's Harper. Harper stolen away by Hall. Timeout for Purdue with three oh. seconds to go. Oh, what thinking by Ricky Hall, who blocked Harper's shot, grabbed the loose ball, and called timeout. And Purdue is going to have a chance to win it at the end. Oh, can you believe these finishes? Yes, I can. Lou Henson thought that his man had been fouled in order for Purdue to get that ball, but of course there was no call on that. Three seconds, as you mentioned, Jim, on the clock. This gives now Gene Cady and his staff time to decide what kind of strategy they want to use on offense before they explain uh, to the uh, players. Well, I, one of the things that got to be discussing, do they stick with this lineup that brought him back, or now do they come back in with a Clawson and a Reed? Well, I see Guys Reed. who can win the ball game for you. Yeah, I think maybe he's going to stay with them. Huh? Well, here's what Katie said about this game before it started. The biggest of the year, and this could determine who goes to determine. When he says the tournament, he means the NCAA. I, I have to believe both these teams will be in postseason play. If no, both are not in the NCAA. One will go there, and the other one certainly is going to be picked up by the NIT. That's my personal observation, but what's his worth much? But Illinois right now has got to go to its bony defense. Well, I'm wondering if Katie now is going to come back in with Reed and Clawson, two great scores, or will he stick with these young guys who've left them back here? Henson would not really single out this game, but certainly called it pivotal. He says all of them are big. Well, it's he's going to seconds. stick with, the, with his youngsters. Yep, he's going to stay with them. Gaddis and Robinson will stay in there. They're the guys that brought him from behind. And Katie says, you guys have done it so far. It's up to you. We're going to win it. Big guns tonight. Harper, 10 points for the Illini. Cross for Purdue, 13. All right, they go in down to Rowinski. will take the shot, and he makes it. Purdue wins. Rowinski, an unlikely hero, has won it for Purdue by two points, 56 to 54.